Y'all, y'all never leave here ragged. I started on a message on Friday night. Got up at two o'clock in the morning to finish the message, uh, my manuscript, and had my manuscript all laid out nicely in my Bible with my towel. And guess what? I left both of them. <laughs> so y'all be patient with me today. And you said life be life in. Life definitely is life in on today. Glad to see you, brother. It's first time you're here, man. First time I've been here with you, the gentleman in the back. Yeah. I've heard you come, but I, I missed you that Sunday. Glad to see you on this morning. Uh, God bless each one of you. We're going to John 10 last week. And really, my message this today is last week was such a triumphant week for me on one end, and then I let my guard down, and I, it's as almost as if I thought that the enemy was going to stop. How many of y'all know that he don't care whether you're in the valley or the mountaintop? He coming. All right, uh, John 10, verse 10. It says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. If I use the text on today, just when I thought the thief had the day off, just when I thought the thief had the day off. It was seen that at every now and then that the enemy would want to take one of his vacation days, <laughs> they want to take one of his times off the job and give you a little rest and give you a little, let you enjoy what your accomplishment is. Because I've, uh, you know, you got to think. I spent 13 years in the front side of the funeral industry and I heard story after story. I once talked to a family and uh, he said they were having the night of their lives. The night of their lives, 22 families. The night of their lives, everything was perfect. Great night at the Grizzly game, great night at dinner. And they're sitting there talking to each other, just enjoying each other's companionship, husband and wife. And the wife just falls dead right in front of them. How many of y'all know that even at the best of times, the enemy, uh, life can hit you. Uh, I, I had another friend, he was hit in the car. He was on the phone with his son in Texas. His son was on the phone with him and he got hit somewhere around FedEx Forum. And his son heard the clash. And son didn't ask no questions in Texas. Hopped behind the wheel and just started driving. Well, the gentleman's wife was killed immediately. And he was laying like dead in the street. And how about Memphis people robbed him? <laughs> took all his money, took his wallet while he's laying out for dead in the street. How many of y'all know even when things are going so, 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 so good, the enemy's always on the attack? It would seem like this old, the old, old saints used to call that old nasty slewfoot devil would take a day off, but he doesn't take a day off. Uh, one of Bishop Patterson's greatest sermons when, when Temple Deliverance really started catching momentum somewhere in that 95, 96 uh, time frame, he preached a sermon that you have to know your enemy. One of the things that would really strengthen us is that we would expect the attack of the enemy. That even when we're good, we only think that the enemy kicks us when we're on the valley. But the enemy will kick you even when you're on the mountaintop. One of our greatest problems in this season of the kingdom is that we're too complacent and we just are too comfortable. I look across the room and tell them you can't be comfortable. Can't be that comfortable. You can't be that comfortable. 
I, I, I'm a former, you know, you know, I, and y'all excuse me today because uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm writing. I, I, I usually write out my messages to compose all my thoughts so it can be so orderly because writing is one of my gifts. But let me give you a personal testimony, and, right. and you got to hear. I failed 10th grade English, and I didn't go to summer school. So in the 11th grade, I had to take 10th grade English again, and you didn't want all of your 11th grade friends to see you in there with the 10th graders taking English. Listen, I'm, I'm serious, they don't watch. You in there with a bunch of babies, and you taking 10th grade English because you played in English. This lady ain't gonna fail me, she gonna pass me. Well, guess what, she failed me. So I took 10th grade English when I was in the 11th, I, I don't know if y'all ever felt that. So Tammy probably ain't never had no problem like that. <laughs> but when you're, in the, when you're in the 11th grade and you're in there with a bunch of babies, <laughs> that's one. But I passed 10th grade English. Uh, I had to go to Whitehaven Summer School in the 11th, after the 10th grade year, which I was already in 11th grade, passing to the 12th. I passed 11th grade English at Whitehaven Summer School with an A. I took 12th grade English at Central and passed that with an A. Went to Memphis State in 1101 and got an A in that class. And one of my English teachers asked me, he said, uh, Mr. Smith, could you stay after class? I said, man, we in college. What you talking about stay after class? He said, she said, your writing is just riveting. I'd like to recommend you for Honors English. And I took Honors English in, at college. I was the only black in the program. But I'm just saying I'm the same guy that failed 10th grade English. Now, now I, I'm not using that to brag, but there are things inside of us that we don't always use. Yeah. There are things, because now the older I get, the more I'm res uh, reflective, because my time is getting shorter. The grid is, is closing. I mean, you don't have forever. If you, if you know, if you 75, you don't need to be on a 35-year mortgage. I tell somebody, tell them you don't need no 30-year mortgage. Tell them you don't need no 30-year mortgage. God bless you. The brother told me he has a picture taken here, yeah, so we're going to see. We're going to see. You can sit right there. We're going to see. All right. He said, you don't need a 30-year mortgage if you're 75. How many of y'all know you might not want to go on the 30-year mortgage? Or, or you don't need to wait for somebody to pay you if you, you can't touch your money for 30 years and you're 70. That might not be wise. Tell them it might not be wise. But here I was the other night, and I heard Bishop Barber said this morning, he said that he would, that we would do our best to have his spirit. Now, I'm a warrior. I grew up all in the hood. Shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have done it. But all we heard about in the hood in my day was cold, cold, cold. You broke the cold in my hood, everybody in the neighborhood would jump on you. I mean, we couldn't even look. We couldn't even date each other's sisters. You had to sneak around and 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 and, and just uh, sneak around, even to speak to a guy's sister. I don't know, not not not. Bo right, I don't know. Did they have cold in your hood? Did they have a cold over there with you, Joe? But that's all. I, so sometimes I have to let this cold stuff go. I'm in the church now, brother. I don't know. Did they now? You young? I don't know. Did they have a cold in your old neighborhood? Huh? Well, well, the problem the other day I had is a guy walked into my personal space. And I'm like, whoa. I said, I had to pray. But then I said, I'm out here. I am Temple of Love's pastor. I can't be around here snatching nobody. But he walked in my personal space. And y'all said, pray for the pastor. Pray for the pastor. Tell the pastor to forget the code. So I'm telling you right now on this morning, when I'm talking about the thief, the thief will come at you at various times. Yeah. The yeah. thief will come at you at all kinds of moments. Yeah. The thief will come to steal from you, yeah. to kill you, and to, uh, and to ultimately to destroy you. Even when you're on the mountaintop, 
He comes at preachers. He comes at teachers. He comes at evangelists. He comes at everybody that professes a call to Christ. John 10 and 10. Uh, because he's given us this discourse, this parable, this story. He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So he's given you what the enemy's mission statement is. But Jesus said, I am come. The reason I'm here is that they might have life. That word life is the word Zoe. It means the God kind of life, the quality of life, that God's given us a, something above, something of a better quality, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That word abundant in the Greek is the word parasos. It means uh, it means super overflowing, running over. While this is talking about the benefits of heaven on the front side, I do believe that God wants us to prosper on this side. Just, God has no problem with you having things. The God's problem on this side is when things start to have us. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he says, All these things shall be added unto you. Our problem in this season of the church is that we can't get so well adjusted to things that we spend all of our time concentrating on things. And I promise you, I ran a cemetery for a whole long time and I saw one funeral uh, uh, come in, one funeral come in where there was a money truck behind behind the hearse. I once heard, and the only reason why the money truck was behind the hearse was a young rapper got killed and, and his name of his record company was Cash Money Records. And I was standing by the grave and they were, uh, you know, had this big old money truck. So I was waiting for see if they were going to drop it off in the grave with them. Because guess who? The last person to see the grave was me. So I am waiting to see what they finna drop in there. All I saw were, were quarters and quarters and dimes and a couple blunts. And, and, and that's all that they put in there. Tell them you can't take it with you. Look at somebody and tell them you can't take it with you. The thief cometh. I 